What's going on? I don't, I don't know. know. That gracious magic, crazy. Magic Marsh. Ma the Magic, magic Marsh. marsh. <laughs> At the beginning of April, we issued a challenge to our viewers in the United States to find three specific species of birds. The blue-winged teal, the yellow-rumped warbler, and the white-crowned or white-throated sparrow. Today, we're out on an all-day birding trip trying to complete the challenge ourselves. We started out at a flat marshy area with many shallow ponds, where right off the bat, we found our first target species. Hey everybody, Derek and Ryan here from Badgerland Birding. We're at Nine Springs in Dane County, and we are doing part of the challenge for April here. We actually picked up our first challenge species, the blue-winged teal. Yeah, we have a bunch of them out there, and they're not too skittish here, which is really nice. But we're going to try to complete this whole challenge in one day. The blue-winged teal is a dabbling duck of shallow waters and marshes. They are common in the northern United States and Canada in the summer, and they winter in the southern U.S., Mexico, and northern South America. Males in breeding plumage are easy to identify, with their speckled bodies and bluish heads. They also have a very noticeable white crescent mark at the base of their bills. Look for blue-winged teals anywhere with slow-moving or standing water, from marshes, to ponds, to lakes, to flooded fields where they feed on aquatic insects and invertebrates. While this species is common in their nesting areas throughout the summer, they are only around for a short duration as they are one of the last duck species to migrate north in spring, but one of the earliest to return to their wintering grounds in fall. Right behind me we have a blue winged teal pair. We have the male that has that crescent shape near the bill. Then it actually does have kind of a blue purplish color on its wing if you ever see it preening. Otherwise it's kind of this uh, brownish speckled color. So it's a really pretty bird. Common here in the summertime. Migrates across the United States similar to the other ducks. In addition to the blue winged teals, the ponds also contain shorebird species such as Wilson snipe and greater and lesser yellow legs. Along with them were many other duck species. Numerous bufflehead pairs were in the area, along with another duck we've become very familiar with due to last month's challenge. Last month's challenge duck meets this month's challenge duck. Northern Shoveler, Blue Winged Teal, together again. We left Nine Springs and headed to some other hot spots in the county. Eventually, we ended up at Pheasant Branch Conservancy, where we hoped the yellow rumped warblers would be easy to find. Pheasant Branch is one of the most popular places to find warblers in the county, as the forests and creeks make for phenomenal habitat. One of the things I love about Pheasant Branch is all the different water they have throughout the property. So here in the creek corridor, there's a lot of different like waterfall areas with steps you can go across, and it's an absolutely amazing place for warblers during peak migration. Just as we expected, the yellow-rumped warblers were certainly there, with good numbers of them moving around in the trees lining the path. Here at Pheasant Branch Conservancy, we actually just picked up our second challenge species, the yellow rumped warbler. There happen to be a bunch of them here. It uh, fits for this time of year, so um, another good find, two out of three for the Dan challenge species. The yellow rumped warbler is a species that consists of a few different subspecies, with the Audubons and the Myrtle being the most widespread in the United States. In the eastern United States, the Myrtle is by far the most abundant of the two, with the Audubon subspecies being extremely rare. Yellow rumped warblers are quite beautiful looking birds, with gray on their head and back, white on their throat and underside and a black mask along with black streaking and trademark yellow patches on their head, below their wing, and of course, on their rump. This species is very common when they migrate through and have been known to spend the winter in the cold climates as well. These particular warblers could have been holdovers from the winter, but most likely just moved in recently as yellow rumped warblers are some of the first warblers to arrive each spring. We continued walking around the conservancy, hoping to find our third and final challenge species, 
the white-throated or white-crowned sparrow. Plenty of birds were out on this beautiful and sunny day, including a male and female wood duck swimming in a creek, a white-breasted nuthatch working its way around a tree, and a gorgeous flock of cedar waxwings singing just above us. However, one of our target sparrows never made itself known at this location. Our next and final stop of the day was the Lowski Marsh, where we ended up due to a rare bird that had been reported. While that's a story for another day, we found a wide array of species at this location, including American white pelicans, yellow-headed blackbirds, song sparrows, and an osprey. On the way out of the marsh, we had a fantastic surprise when we heard an unexpected white-crowned sparrow calling. Eventually, we tracked it down to a stand of bushes, where we got some looks at it. Well, we completed the challenge. We just completed the challenge. Last minute. Challenge completion. Boom. Teamwork. We got them. It didn't seem like that was going to happen. We just got a random white-crowned sparrow, which I usually see or hear after a white-throated sparrow. White-throated sparrows usually come here first. What's going on? I don't, I don't know. know. Magic, crazy. magic marsh. <laughs> the magic, magic marsh. marsh. <laughs> The white-crowned sparrow inhabits nearly all of North America at some point of the year. Most of the southern United States and Mexico serve as their wintering grounds, while Canada and Alaska are their destination when heading north. The upper Midwest and Northeast serve as stopover points on the way up. White-crowned sparrows are quite recognizable with their black and white striped crown, gray bodies, and brown mottled wings. Immature white-crowned sparrows look similar, but with a dull brown crown, and both adults and immature birds have an orange or pinkish colored bill. This species can often be seen hopping along the ground, searching the substrate for seeds and insects. It was somewhat surprising to find this particular sparrow, as they usually arrive in the state after white-throated, and I would have thought that white-throated would have been the one we would have seen first. Either way, it felt good to conclude our April challenge. Well, it was cool. At least we were able to complete the challenge all in one day. Um, we actually ended up doing a lot of stuff today, so it was cool to, to fit in the challenge as well. The very nature of migration made this challenge interesting. Earlier in the month, all three of these species were extremely difficult to find. But now later in the month, they all moved into the state in significant numbers. We were excited to complete the April challenge, and are excited to reveal the May challenge next. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.